So today we're going to be talking about fibromuscular dysplasia. And fibromuscular dysplasia is, as the name implies, it's a dysplasia of the fibromuscular layer of the artery. And so that can be inside the artery in the intima or can involve muscular dysplasia of the media. And it can also involve the adventitia, which are the layers of the arterial wall. And so when we have weakening in the wall, we can get an aneurysm, an outpouching, or we can get a dissection from a tear in the wall. And th the reason this is important for neuro-ophthalmology is this can come to us as arterial disease. So if you've got a carotid dissection, you might have a Horner syndrome. As you know, the sympathetics are on the internal carotid artery, but the Horners can also appear to us in the vertebral system from vertebral dissection. We can get posterior cerebral artery infarctions from the vertebral basilar system that leads to occipital lobe infarcts and homonymous hemianopsis. And so we got both pupillary findings, small pupil with the Horner syndrome, but also large pupil with third nerve palsy from aneurysms in patients with fibromuscular dysplasia. Now, even though patients are born with the fibromuscular dysplasia, it's congenital, that present later in life because the wall is just weak. It's a predisposing risk factor. And then something precipitates trauma, coughing, chronic vomiting, valsalva maneuver, something happens to the person and they get a tear. You should know that it can affect both the renal arteries, which means you can get renal vascular hypertension and the extracranial arteries in the head and neck. And that's why these, this combination of findings where we have renal vascular hypertension and a Horner's, a renal vascular hypertension and a vertebral dissection or a carotid dissection or third nerve palsy or carotid cavernous fistula. These, this combination of findings, we're gonna be really thinking about FMD and we're gonna be looking at the artery wall and that's with CTA or MRA or a digital subtraction angiogram. And typically there's stenosis and enlargement, stenosis and enlargement, and that's a classical string of beads kind of configuration. So we wanna make sure it's not vasculitis or some other vessel problem. The most common thing that we have to be worried about is Ehlers-Danlos type four, the vascular form, which is a collagen disorder as well, but that one's inherited. So Ehlers-Danlos type four, Marfans, these are the other things we're gonna be thinking about in a patient who has what looks like radiographically fibromuscular dysplasia. There's no serologic test for this, so it's a clinical and radiographic diagnosis. So you should be thinking about FMD in patients who have wall disorders. It presents with big pupil, small pupil, Horner's third, carotid cavernous fistula, aneurysm, arterial dissection in young people, but it can occur at any age. You're gonna be looking for the distinctive radiographic sign, which is the stenosis dilation, stenosis dilation. You're gonna to have to do some sort of angiography here, CTA, MRA, digital subtraction angiogram, and you should really be worried about renal vascular hypertension in the setting of extracranial arterial disease, think FMD.